Education is at a crossroads in North Africa. Despite the progress in the region since independence, the impact of education on development has been less than what many people had expected. Experts say there is a gap between education and labor markets. This gap is not only holding back progress, it's left around one in three graduates without hope of finding work. Our system of education has a lot of challenges, and so we have been amenés progressively to do the best cas of l'enseignement sans faire de l'éducation, ce qui fait que beaucoup de nos bacheliers aujourd'hui manquent d'éducation. In the past decade, the governments of Algeria, Morocco and Tunisia introduced the LMD reform, a curriculum made up of licences, masters and doctorate degrees. The expectation was that this reform would give students a better chance of finding a job, but that hasn't happened. Mais là, il faut le dire, c'est l'information n'est pas encore arrivée sur ce que c'était exactement cet LMD. Graduate unemployment is now more than 50% in parts of the region. Some university professors feel there's very little they can do to improve things. الجامعات التونسية في الوقت الحالي مكبلة من طرف السلطة الإشراف من طرف وزارة التعليم العالي. وزارة التعليم العالي في الوقت الحالي مكبلة. من رئاسة الحكومة معناها رئيس جامعة يوجد اللي هو يمضي في الأوراق وما عندوش معناها القرار So a group of university presidents and senior officials from Algeria, Morocco and Tunisia travelled almost 10,000 kilometers here to Malaysia With the help of a program run by the World Bank called South-South Knowledge Exchange and in cooperation with the British Council, they are in Kuala Lumpur to find out how Malaysia has become such a learning hub in Southeast Asia. L'objectif est de pouvoir avoir une idée sur le fonctionnement des universités en Malaisie, puisque nous pensons qu'ils ont une certaine maturité dans une bonne gouvernance, c'est en particulier en termes de d'autonomie et de responsabilisation. The journey begins at the Malaysian Ministry of Education. At this round table, the discussion is focused on the autonomy of universities. Public universities in Malaysia have a lot of flexibility, and eight of them have been granted full autonomy in all their decisions. They're not part of the government, they are intellectually and academically free. We are trying our very best to liberalize the system. We want to leave the university alone. On the same time, we want the university to also understand national aspiration. You cannot be, you cannot be working uh, in national relation with uh, national strategic uh, aspiration. What makes Malaysia different is that in 1996, the government endorsed the Private Education Act. The act opened the door to the private sector. Government allowed the private sectors to come in and build up their universities. So with a diversification from the public and the private, the competition for the quality of education is there. So when everybody competes for the better quality, that's really move up the standards. However, competition alone is not enough. The government also created the Malaysian Qualifications Agency. This independent body accredits universities and ranks them based on the quality of programs they're offering. We have to make sure that the quality, whether the quality of teaching, the quality of campus, you can see the campus, a beautiful campus that we prepare for the students. The learning experience that we give to the students must be the highest quality. Uh, the support, the services, lecturers and the labs and so must be a high quality. Taylor's is one of Malaysia's top universities. Its priority is to educate a generation of graduates that will go on to help develop Malaysia. By 2020, our nations, we want to be to become a high-income nation and whereby our uh, per capita income 
to touch USD 15,000. As of today, we are only touching about 9,005. It's quite achievable, I must say, but we have a role to play as an institution. What makes Taylor's stand out is the way it develops its students' skills, preparing them for the jobs market. We engage a lot of activities than the engagement. We bring the experts and the industry people to come to see them. On, also, on the other hand, we bring them out to expose them to the real world. There are well-equipped facilities like this kitchen. These students are studying hospitality. Here they can get the practical knowledge employers are looking for. Students also get to manage their own food brand on campus, giving them a crucial understanding of what it's like to run a business. In the semester three, we had this industrial training uh, internship, and we we like submitting CVs to any companies, let's say hotels, and when they heard about Taylor's, we came from Taylor's. They, they you know, they, they were like enthusiastic because this is actually good for hospitality management. Malaysian universities are attracting students from across the region, opening a window of opportunity for them to become global leaders and competing with the world's top universities to create a knowledge economy. The quality of education in Malaysian universities is something this North African delegation wants to take back home. We have a lot of things to learn from this system, principally that it is a system of accreditation, which is quite remarkable, because it is one of the criteria to measure the level of establishments and universities in the world. So, to align ourselves on world criteria, we are supposed to be at the Maghreb to put in place des agences de qualité de telle sorte est-ce qu'il y ait une évaluation du système de formation au niveau du Maghreb en général. One of the biggest differences is there's no independent evaluation system to measure the performance of North African universities and universities themselves have little say on how students are educated. So Malaysia seems to have got the balance right. This delegation from North Africa is clearly impressed. But if things are going to change back home, the education system will need major reforms. Il parle naturellement un langage de planification stratégique. Il parle naturellement. Il commence tous avec leur vision et taux décline de cette vision et de, de cette mission. Et le taux décline veut dire que ils connaissent leurs axes stratégiques, ils connaissent leurs objectifs stratégiques, ils connaissent leurs indicateurs de performance, leurs KPI, key performance indicators. Et ils savent que c'est là que ça se joue. Et tous, ils parlent de, de besoin d'ajustement quand il y a besoin d'ajustement et de prendre le temps ensemble de dire « Ah, nous avons besoin de revoir notre plan stratégique ». Donc ils ont intériorisé, intégré quelque part cette culture de dire « Je planifie et j'exécute ce que j'ai planifié. » Mais j'ai pris le temps de planifier J'ai adopté les bonnes pratiques de planification stratégique et je sais que maintenant je vais m'atteler à faire une très bonne exécution de ce que j'ai planifié. Et que ça demande, pour une bonne exécution, ça demande une bonne gouvernance et je travaille sur cette bonne gouvernance, je mets ensemble les ingrédients nécessaires pour pouvoir bien exécuter, pour pouvoir bien planifier et pour pouvoir bien exécuter. البيداغوجية والإدارية للجامعة كرئاسة جامعة أنا الجامعات تو تفتقر إلى الإطار الإداري الكفا للقيام بالمهامات هذه من بينها مهمة التقييم إذا هذا يسوقنا إلى موضوع هام هو موضوع الحوكمة وموضوع استقلالية الجامعات. The governments of Algeria, Morocco and Tunisia are already reforming their education systems. It's not yet clear how the changes will impact on universities. Institutions say that if they're given more autonomy, they can perform better, giving graduates and these North African countries hope of progress.